Um, so good to see you. If maybe you've been away from church for a little while and you're at church today, so good to see you if this is your first time ever at church. So good to see you if you've been coming to this church for decades. It's great to see you. I know I kind of say something like that every week. Um, but just, wow, just wanting you to know what a privilege it is as a pastor here to, to stand up, to have a privilege of opening God's Word, to look out and, and see this gathered crowd. It, I know we do this week in, week out, and I know I say it's good to see you week in, week out, but it really is so amazing to see you, to, to stand there at the front and hear your voices declare, I will trust in you alone. Wow. It's just extraordinary. You know, I, 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 sometimes we take this for granted, what happens here Sunday by Sunday, week by week. We can take it for granted, we just do it. But we should never take this for granted. You know, I mean, there is this faithful presence of Jesus followers choosing today to come to this place and say, do you know what? Through all of it, we're going to still say Jesus is alive. We trust in him and we join in with what's been going on for 2,000 years. Jesus followers saying, we're going to gather every Lord's Day and we're going to proclaim Jesus Christ is alive. And he can be trusted and he's good. And then we get to do that together. And the fact you've chosen to be here over anything else that you could have been doing today at the shopping mall or on the golf course or whatever it is your thing. And said, no, what I'm going to do, I'm going to prioritize getting to church to be my brothers and sisters that we may encourage one another in the Lord and we may proclaim that Jesus Christ is alive as a faithful witness in mid-Sussex to say that Jesus is still alive today and people need to know him. It's just awesome what happens here guys and we gather with others in mid-Sussex and others across the nation and others across the world. We should never take this for granted. So it's good to see you at church. It's good to see you at church today. Let's um, open our Bibles to Psalm 27. Uh, I'm going to read the whole of this psalm today. Written by King David. Uh, when you read David's life, um, it, it is a life full of victories and tragedies and opportunities and mistakes and challenges and triumphs, and at times David was literally running for his life. We know that in his story. Often experienced opposition and enemies rising up against him. We get a sense of that in this psalm. Let's read it together. He says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it's my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me and at his sacred tent I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You've been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. 
Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes. For false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Lord, we love your word. Lord, these words written thousands of years ago speak into our hearts today. Speak into situations in the room today. And Lord, I just pray as we begin to think about some of the things that are said that you would, by your Holy Spirit, help me. And I pray, open our ears and our eyes and our minds and our hearts to everything you want to say to us today. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. I want to talk today about seeking God. In verse 8 of that psalm, David says, My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. And I want to encourage us today as a church to be a community that keeps doing this, that continually seeks God. And I know, listen, I know we have many faithful people here who pray and have sought God for years. But at the start of this new year, I'm so grateful for that history, that legacy, but I want to encourage us again to be a community together that seeks God. And and really, in some ways, this message, I guess, is preparation. I I kind of want to prepare us, maybe get our hearts ready for this year, and specifically preparing us to think about our week of prayer and fasting that Tim's just been talking about from the 21st to the 28th of January. He's already given you some details of that. We're setting aside a week in the life of our church in order to seek God together, to seek his presence, to seek his will, to seek his voice that we may this year together walk more closely with Jesus. Anyone want to walk more closely with Jesus this year? Amen. We're actually, um, we're going to do this three times this year, okay? Uh, uh, in the beginning of every term, we're going to have a week of prayer and fasting. Yes, fasting. I did say fasting, yeah. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Fasting, if you don't know what fasting is, it's a choice that we make in certain seasons to abstain from food or maybe other pleasures or distractions in order for us to more fully uh, kind of focus on God in prayer. Um, It's like it's a spiritual practice that, to be honest with you, we don't actually practice very much or very often. I want to talk a little bit about that this year, why prayer and fasting. So I kind of want to prepare us for this year, but also prepare us for this week of prayer and fasting coming up. Um, I want to encourage us, all of us, every one of us, to be a people that seek God together. Seeking God is a very biblical idea. I actually spent um, many hours this week, uh, I did a a, a Bible search on the word seek or sought, um, and just to see how many times in the Bible God's people um, are told to seek God or sought God. Uh, David sought God. The people of God, they sought God together. A call was come, come, let's seek God together. I could be here for the next three hours if I read Every verse, encouraging the people of God to seek God, to look to him. Um, In fact, I was wondering whether to read that psalm that Haysun has just read. You know, when God's speaking, when I've been wrestling, do I read Psalm 121 that says, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. I lift up my eyes to look to him. I was like, I wonder if I read that today and then Haysun's come and done that for me which is wonderful because I think God's speaking to us about the fact that we need to be a people that seek God, that lift our eyes to him. That's where our help will come from, the Lord says. 1 Chronicle 16 says, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he's done. 
Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all of his wonderful acts, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Look to the Lord always. Seek his face always. Jeremiah 29 verse 13, the prophet, he, God is speaking through Jeremiah and God says this, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. What a promise. You will find me, God says, when you seek me with all of your heart. Wow, what a promise of God. But notice what it says, when you seek me with all of your heart. When you give all of your heart to something, you end up being quite focused on it, don't you? End up being quite committed to it, quite engaged on it. It kind of dominates your mind. You make it a priority when you give your heart to something. And God says, if you give your heart, all of your heart to seek in me, I will be found, he says. What an extraordinary invitation. Guys, we don't want to just... Uh, Tim's kind of made reference to this, I guess. We don't want to just stumble into 2024, okay? And, uh, and like the same old year, yeah, we know what to do. We know how to gather. We know how to put a band together. We know how to do a Sunday morning. We'll go through our year. We'll do our normal rhythm. We'll get to the end. We'll have a busy Christmas season. We'll get to crack carols at King's and think, yeah, that was a good year. Do you know what the danger is? We could do all of that this year as a church and not seek God once. We could, we could go through the year doing what we do and never humble ourselves before the Lord and say, Lord, what do you want to do? What's your will? Jesus taught us to pray, oh, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It, there is a, such a danger that churches can go through a full and busy calendar and look healthy and look busy but not with all their hearts seek the Lord. <laughs> seek his will, seek his presence, seek his power, seek his wisdom, seek his guidance. Wow, what a danger that is. Anyone here want to know that we're in the will of God as a local church? Okay, so we come in prayer together and say, Lord, let your will be done. <laughs> We want to hear your voice. We want, we want you to lead us, Lord. We want you to guide us. We want you to direct us. We want to be the people that are following you, not just doing what we've done. God, we want to seek after you in 2024. Amen. David, in the psalm that he reads, he speaks of the many challenges that he faces. He writes of people advancing against him, wanting to take him out. Armies besieging him war breaking out against him, false witnesses spouting malicious accusations against him. How does he respond? One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. It, like Faced with all these obstacles, all these difficulties, all these challenges, David's response was one thing, one thing. I'm going to seek the Lord in this temple. Uh, I'm going to gaze on his beauty. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. I'm going to look to him. He was utterly confident as well of God's help. I don't know if you saw that in the psalm. Utterly confident in God's answer and God's promise. So the battles he faced were real. He could write in that psalm, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, take heart and wait for the Lord. What confidence in God. People are trying to devour me, he says, but I'm confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. So I'm going to wait on him. I'm going to put my hope in him. I'm going to turn my eyes to him. Of course, our, our challenges are different, aren't they? We, we have challenges. Of course we do, many challenges. I mean, there's global issues that can cause us such anxiety, wars and political uncertainty and mass migration and the climate emergency and like there's challenges globally, externally outside of us and then there's those challenges internally within us, things that we face. 
uh, health challenges, whether it's physical or mental health challenges, financial uncertainty, whether it's relationship breakdown, there's challenges we face, we're carrying, and I know so many are carrying today. Then there's issues like we just long, don't we, to see God's kingdom come so that those in oppression may be upheld and restored. We, we long to see an end to injustice. We, we long to see God's kingdom come in those kind of ways. And of course, we long to see God's kingdom come in salvation. We're carrying hearts for people that would love to know the love and grace of Jesus and all these things that we're carrying. Some can feel so overwhelming, other things we're longing for, things we've been praying for for years. It's like, how do we carry all these things? My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. What do we do with all of it? We come. We look to the Lord. And there's such power, church, when we do that together. When we say, no, we're going to bring these things to you together, Lord, in trust and in prayer, we're going to look to you. So let our response be like David's response. Let's start by seeking God. And we read so many examples, like I said, in the Bible, I could read verse after verse of the people of God, whether it's in times of crisis or times of famine or opposition or in times where they needed guidance or wisdom or God's provision or renewal. The people of God said together, what we need to do is get together and seek the Lord's and seek his face, and pray, and wait on him. Before we do anything else together, before we take another step, we're going to stop, we're going to seek God together. It's a a conscious decision to say, do you know what, God, without you, without you we have nothing, Uh, without you nothing's going to change, but actually with you we have everything, and with you all things are possible, and so we're going to choose to focus on you. And there's situations, aren't there? I've got situations, things in my heart that like, I long to see God's answer. I long to see God's provision. I long to see a situation change. I long to see a situation healed or restored. And there's things in me, I'm like, oh God, when will that change come? Lord, I'm praying for your kingdom to come. You know, Jesus said that there's certain situations only change as a result of focused and intense times of prayer. Actually, there's this story that we read about in the Bible where Jesus sends out his disciples to do the things that he'd been doing. And his disciples are trying to free someone from an evil spirit. And they can't. They, they can't do it. And they're discouraged. And they come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I don't know what we're doing wrong. I think we're trying to do the things that you taught us to do. And Jesus taught them in the evening when they're talking about this, like reviewing the day. He said, oh, yeah, this, thing, this particular situation could only change because of prayer. Actually, some translations said because of prayer and fasting. It's like, do you know what? This particular situation here, guys, it needed a focused time of intense prayer and fasting to really seek the Lord, to see a transformation that we need. It seems like Jesus is suggesting, actually, sometimes we need to prevail in prayer, if you know what I mean. Like together, say, God, we're not moving until together we feel like we've sought you on this issue. It's why we feel it's important to set aside regular prayer evenings. Yesterday morning, um, is brilliant, over 20 of us at Men's Prayer crying out to God for this year, Women's Prayer, um, Prayer Weeks, because we want to be a people that seeks after the face of God. Certain situations, certain breakthroughs are needed. That's what's happening 21st to 28th. Like I said, we could just carry on this year as a church, do what we do. It could look healthy and busy, but there's such a danger we could do it all without seeking God first, seeking his face, hearing his voice together. And, and you know, many churches across our nation right now have, have kind of called for a season of prayer and fasting. Uh, I know of many churches from many streams, many denominations, many networks who right now are saying, come on church, at the start of this year, let's pray and let's fast together. It's like in all that's going on, we just know, don't we, that kind of slick programs and whatever else isn't going to cut it. What we need is God. <laughs> we need a move of God in our nation. There's a, it just feels like this growing longing again for God. We can't do it on our own. We need to seek you. We need a move of God in the UK. And I'm praying that that's our 
kind of passion, our, our desire. We carry a flame in our heart for that as well, saying, God, we need something more of you, of your presence, of your guidance, of your provision, of your will for our nation. And so we're going to be serious about how we seek you in prayer. We're going to seek his face together to humble ourselves, to pray for our families, to pray for health situations, to pray for reconciliation in relationships, for unity, for the Holy Spirit to move afresh in our church. If anyone would like more of the Holy Spirit moving in our church, give me an amen. That we may hear God together, be strengthened together, know that we're, know that we're in his will and not just carry on as we always have done. Let's seek God together. So, I say all of this because I'm, I'm asking, inviting, calling, whatever word you want to use, for you all to be part of this. All of us to be part of this. If you count yourself part of this church family, please count yourself in to praying, fasting. I'll talk about that in a moment. Your prayers make a difference. Sometimes I think we wonder if they do. Can, can I just say, your prayers make a difference. I am encouraged by your prayers. I am strengthened. Together we are encouraged and strengthened as we hear one another pray and declare our trust in God. Um, Don't think this is for someone else. God calls us to be a body. Everyone is needed. But I know what I'm like, so I just want to just throw out a bit of a provocation if I can. Um, In order to engage with the prayer week like we've got coming up, 21st to the 28th, it will require some intention and some planning and some decision making to say, yeah, I, I will get to the evenings of prayer. I'll make a plan to do that. My My hunch is this, if we work out on the day whether we feel like it or not, you probably won't get there. There is a resolve to seek the Lord together. Both Sunday nights we're gathering here and I say, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there to pray. We've got this prayer room, Tim mentioned upstairs. It'll take a decision to say, do you know what, I'm going to book a slot, I'm going to get there after work or I'm going to meet up with people at lunchtime or I'm going to get some people from my life group, we're going to book an hour, we're going to get to the prayer room, we're going to do it. It's going to require a decision to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to resolve to be part of this. Like we said, there'll be info coming out about how you can do all of that this week. I want us to be a people that seek God together. But what about the fasting thing? Let's talk about fasting a little bit here. Um, Why are we making it a week of prayer and fasting? Well, like I said earlier, fasting is something that we do when we say no to something. Normally food, but it can be other things as well, other distractions. And we do it in order to kind of express a devotion and need of God. It's a a spiritual practice. It's something I want to grow in in 2024. Um, And I want to encourage us as a community to encourage one another in this, actually, because I think we need one another's encouragement to step into what fasting is. John Piper um, says this, an author, he says, fasting is a temporary renunciation of something that is in itself good, like food, in order to intensify our expression of need for something greater, namely God and his work in our lives. So fasting is saying no to some things for us to more fully express our need and devotion and desire for something greater for God himself. And there have been times in my life where I fasted. And um, it's an interesting thing because when you do skip a meal or two, and you suddenly feel hungry, and you go to eat, and then you remind yourself what you're doing, it does focus your attention a little bit on Jesus. In that moment, you're like, oh yeah, I am hungry, right. Okay, what, so I need to get back to why I'm doing this. I'm doing this that I may know Jesus more closely in my life. And so actually, in this moment where I feel hungry, I'm just going to pray and be aware of his presence more acutely than I would have done if I'd come down and had a coronation chicken sandwich from the cafe. It helps you kind of a discipline that says, do you know what? What I need most in my life is God. So I'm I'm just going to say no to this for a season. (coughs) Throughout the Bible, it just seems to be part and parcel of life for the people of God. I'll give you some examples. King David, when one of his kids was struck down with illness, 
we read that he prayed and that he fasted and he spent nights lying in sackcloth on the ground pleading with God for his child. When King Jehoshaphat heard that the nation of Judah was under attack, he actually made the decision to seek God and he called the whole nation to fast. And we actually read that um, the people came from every town in Judah to seek God together and fast together. There's a togetherness. The nation came together because of the situation, this incredible thing of togetherness in prayer and in fasting. Um, Esther, Esther, what a story. Esther, when um, she risked her own life to save her people, when she needed to go and have a difficult conversation with the king, it says that she urged all the Jews in the city where she lived to fast for her. She said to them, don't eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. Daniel, when he responded to a prophetic word about the destruction of Jerusalem, it says he turned to God and pleaded with God in prayer and petition and fasting. Ezra, when Ezra led the people of God out of Babylon and back to Jerusalem, we read that Ezra called a fast so that they may humble themselves before God and ask him for a safe journey for them, their children, and their possessions. When Nehemiah heard about the state of Jerusalem and the city walls, we read that he sat down and wept, and for some days he mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Through the prophet Joel, God urges his people to return to him with all of their heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. As we go into the New Testament, as we read about the events of Jesus' birth, we read of an amazing woman called Anna who never left the temple in Jerusalem. We read that she was there worshipping God night and day, fasting and praying, anticipating the arrival of the Messiah that God had promised. Jesus himself, before he started his ministry, entered into a season of fasting. And when teaching his disciples on the Sermon on the Mount, he taught them in such a way that it assumed that they would fast. Not that it was an optional extra, giving them practical guidelines on how to do that. And as we get into the life of the early church, we read about how in a church like Antioch, before they sent Paul and Barnabas out on mission, they fasted and worshipped and prayed together. And as they went around the early apostles establishing churches, it says they committed themselves to worship and prayer and fasting as they um, appointed eldership teams in every local church. So whether it's praying for their kids or seeking God in a time of opposition or preparing for an important conversation with someone or asking for protection or seeking guidance or anticipating God's promises to be fulfilled or appearing, uh, appointing new leaders or going on mission, people in the Bible sought God in prayer and in fasting. And I'm reading all of this during this week as I'm preparing for today thinking, man, it's just obvious, isn't it? From the Bible, this is part and parcel of of, of life. There's these key moments where communities gather and fast in order to seek God. So that's why we're calling these three weeks this year, weeks of prayer and fasting. Now, ordinarily people fast from food. Maybe you might choose a day during our week of prayer to say, I'm going to skip lunch that day and I'm going to pray instead. Or maybe miss breakfast or lunch and break, break the fast with an evening meal. Or sometimes people just eat fruit or sometimes just drink juice. Or there's different ways to do that. And I'll say publicly, please be very wise with your health and if necessary, seek advice as to whether you should or should not fast. I want to be wise with this. But I am provoking us and inviting us to consider fasting at some point during that week. I'm not being prescriptive about it because all our lives and our routines and situations are different. But also there may be other things as well you might consider fasting in order to focus on God. Um, So as an example, um, social media. The biggest distraction of our generation. True. So I've taken a decision to jump off social media at the start of this year. Um, Beware shorts on YouTube. (laughs) Someone knows what I'm talking about. Beware reels on Instagram and TikTok. They will consume your life. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Scroll, 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 look up. Scroll, scroll, scroll. And then suddenly you realize an hour and a half, scroll. Over Christmas, there's this moment in our house. I'm in the kitchen 
and, and my family around. My son, Levi, was about four yards away from me. And I was on my phone. Um, obviously, it must be very important, what I was looking at. Apparently, Levi asked me a question three times, and I didn't hear him once. He's as, he was as near to me as Adam is, because I'm on my phone consumed by, I don't know, BBC Sport or something. So my son saying, Dad, 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 I just didn't hear. I don't want to be that dad. I had to apologize to my son. I said, I'm sorry. And as I've thought about that, I've wondered how many times God is saying, Jim, Jim, Jim. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, we want to hear God's voice, right? <laughs> we want to hear his guidance. We want to know his will. I wonder if a load of the time he's much nearer than we think and we're just so distracted, so consumed. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just laying it aside for a bit thinking, man, there's more important things Maybe for you this week of 21st and 28th of Jan, just jump off social media. It'll still be there a week later. We can all get involved in this. Every age group can get involved in this, no matter what age you are. Young people, I'm speaking to you, don't think prayer and fasting for, for an older crowd. I long to see you caught up in an adventure of prayer in our church. Maybe for some of you, maybe actually the thing that you need to lay down for a day or two is gaming. Maybe turn off the Xbox. Say, I'm going to say no to that for a little while. Just say yes to Jesus, that I may go closer to him. If my son was here, he might say to me, Dad, you're trying to kill me by suggesting that. You're making my life a misery. No, I just have a desire that we walk closely with Jesus. And there's so many things that get in the way. Now listen, don't fast because I say we should fast or because you think you really ought to fast because that's the proper thing to do. If you're going to fast, fast because you want to seek God. Fast because you want to go closer with him because you want to walk closer with Jesus this year because you want to go deeper in your relationship with Christ. The Bible doesn't command it. No, it does the Bible command fasting. Um, and it's not to be a burden or a legalistic duty for us. We miss the point if, if it becomes that. I'm simply encouraging us because I long for us to walk closer with Jesus this year and I can't avoid what I read in the Bible that the people of God seem to do this. And it's interesting, isn't it? Um, nutritionists and health professionals and personal trainers will recommend fasting to you and will see it as a good idea. We've, we've got a book in our home, haven't we, by a doctor who's written this kind of healthy nutritional, healthy meals thing. There's a whole chapter in there about fasting. And it's interesting when we hear fasting and we think, oh, it might improve my fitness or my, my health or my appearance. We think it sounds like a good idea. When a pastor suggests it, we think like, it's legalistic or a burden or a duty. It's like, why, why is it if we think fasting might be good for our health? Do we not think fasting might be a good thing for our spiritual health? Uh, Paul says, like, physical training has some benefit, but godliness has much greater benefit. So it's just weird how we perceive things. Like, the latest fad will say, do a fast, and here's a diet, miss a day a week, we'll think, brilliant, I'm going to do that in 2024. A pastor says fast, and you think, oh, you're getting a bit legalistic. <laughs> if it has physical benefits, it can do. There's far more spiritual benefits, I think the Bible suggests. So, I want to start drawing in. It's the start of 2024. I don't want us to just, as a church, carry on as we always carry on without, first of all, saying, God, God, we're seeking you together. All of us are included in this. Don't count yourself out. I actually sent a message to Dan this week, that first evening on the 21st of January when we gather, I just want us to have an extended time of worship, enjoying God together. 
that we may come and declare his praise and his goodness. I don't want us to just stumble into a year. Let's make a decision. We're going to seek God. It means we make a plan. We're intentional, right? We have this week. So yeah, one of the applications from today is for each of us to think through, well, what does that mean for me then? Yeah, I mean, how does that impact my diary, my choices, my rhythm? How do I engage with that? Like I said, resources, info will come out. It's an intentional act. I promise you, I promise you, there will be a hundred distractions that week that will seem to prevent you engaging in a week of prayer. So we make a choice. We're going to seek God together. Um for his provision for us, for his will, for his guidance, for his presence. Presence of God. We need more than anything else. For his power, for breakthrough. The situations I know people are facing, I long for a breakthrough. So I'm going to seek God. Join, it with, join with me in seeking God together. Um, and in fact, actually, do you know what? I want to pray over us as a church. But I actually just want us to enjoy him together now. I want us to seek him together. We're going to worship him. We're just going to... God, we're here for you. That's why we're gathered today. Worship team, thank you so much. Why don't we stand? I'm just going to pray for us. And it may be, I don't know, maybe in a moment, I'm not sure, we might offer prayer ministry for those that feel God speaking to them about something today. But just now, I want to pray for us and I want us to worship. Is that okay? Lord, we humble ourselves before you today. And we just simply say, we need you, Lord. At the start of this year, we we say we want to be a people that before we do anything, we seek you. That we're not just going to rely on what we've done, what's gone before, what's worked, what hasn't worked, what we know how to do. Lord, you want to be a people that says, Lord, it's a blank canvas. What's your will for us? Lord, we say together in this moment, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth, in our church, in our lives this year. Teach us to wait upon you, Lord. Teach us to be confident in your goodness. Teach us. Teach me, Lord, that the thing that I need more than anything else is to be in your temple, to seek your face, to gaze on your beauty. Teach us that together, I pray. And even now, Lord, as we come to worship you, and maybe there's words of encouragement that will come in a moment, Lord, help us to turn our eyes to you. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord. I pray for over situations today where you're not sure of the way through. I pray that you in these moments will be able to lift up your eyes to the Lord. Know that your help comes from the Lord. I pray for situations that seem hopeless. I pray that hope will be restored in you today as we lift up our eyes together. Holy Spirit, even in these moments we have remaining today, will you come and minister hope and truth and grace to us? Help us to be a people that fix our eyes upon you, Lord Jesus.